<laughs> Sorry, everybody. I was I was too busy being absolutely cool. Okay. I've got with me uh, Noki. No, Noki. Some some Noki. It's Italian, I think. Sorry, it took so long. I had to make it from scratch. Harvested the wheat myself. It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the machine's memory should go. Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. For summoning some time forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries very advanced so we're dealing with something medical here you think so the web is comprised of radio stations all lead back to one red heart titled the game master frequency a note says this one can listen in on any station it wants looks like a surveillance program they must have had massive air with these things don't come cheap Wait, who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. What's in here? Excuse me, sub screen. Top laminated top plate layer. Production schedule, film at memory. Is it an interact? No. Still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. 
press play again. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no. It was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien co like technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue de Saint-Gueslaine. This is East Inflindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Ah, right. Thanks for the explanation. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. You should ask her for a hint. A password? No, better password. Can you give me a hint? No. Um, this is the police, so please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. Now, can you please repeat the password? Is it my brother? Still, no. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Why did you call me Fortune a Fortress accident? Fortress accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any more information about this company? One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. What's that, this uh, interactive calling radio game? Any other questions? What are you, a machine, or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old, and my name is Yvonne. I work as a repeater at the East Inflindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Doesn't it get lonely? 
sitting there all by herself. It doesn't get lonely doing this job. Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for Tres Accident. That's all for now. Thank you and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. I love this game more than I can put into words. Nice. Play and print keys shine. This is this is quite fun so far. I am enjoying it a lot. My fucking chat is like hella broken right now. Oh, that works. Okay, let's see if let's see if that uh that fixes it. Nope, wrong one. <laughs> um Cool. <clears throat> um Okay, we'll, we'll leave that in there. I leveled up. Uh, right now, I'm playing the, the psych, the emotional build, uh, if that helps. Um, I put a lot of uh, points into motor... Motorix? Um, I'm going to check what I have to do. Um, right now, I've been putting a lot into conceptualization. But I kind of want to put some into rhetoric to try to continue to try to open the cargo door container. Uh, but I really think I should actually do indirect modes of taxation because I want to forget this. Because I, I truly believe that I don't want to play a game, a character that like uh, that has less empathy. I want to have empathy, so I'm going to forget uh, indirect modes of taxation. And um. I, I do want to... I like to destroy shit. I think I figured it out. So, I'm going to put myself into the anti-object. Um, can't remember what my build was. Only played it once, though. Threw it once. Um, I think I did a super physical build with good instinct, but kind of a dummy. Yeah. I think I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to internalize the, the object... Uh, anti-object task force. Um... My pain threshold is now at negative two, which puts me at just two. Um, which is which is okay. Uh, it, it does hurt right now. What about this door over here? Where does this go? This is terrifying. No wait, is this the fucking fridge that I'm looking for? Thank you, Mad Maxima, for the you follow. You see a terrifying ice beer with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost, and the beer's eyes are glowing red. This ice beer is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. Your words echo in the empty chamber, ringing against the wet floor tiles. The bear keeps staring. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. Look inside the refrigerator. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers in there. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. This fucking sucks. Because I put the body away because I knew there wasn't a fridge, but this fridge is giant, which we could have put the body in to examine the body more. But I, there's no way I would have done it. My my perception is like pretty meh. I could have had it higher, but there's no way. I will close the door. Okay, let's check the uh 
contract. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. And it, the reason why we are in, in investigating this area is because I don't have uh, Kitsuragi with me because I sent him away to do the body because I feel like he wouldn't have enjoyed I I investigating this area. So it's kind of a catch-22. Read the Someone notes. Has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff. This is what he would have showed me! He would have told me it's here if I got the fucking thing! God damn it. I fucking... I, I failed that check to, to ask him where where he thinks the fridge is. But he, this is where it is. God damn it. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home. ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswa. Suliswa? Who wrote that now? According to the note, someone named Sulislav. Someone who owns a radio computer, one might assume. <laughs> Thanks, smartass. You're welcome. What's a filament memory? The note doesn't specify. Okay, this is the letter the note code. Does not specify. Are you serious? You sure you don't want to as a guest here, detective? Oh, oh, you mean you mean Kuno? Ding, ding, ding! We have a winner. Okay. Uh, where's the first ice cream maker? Somewhere among the shadows in the cellar. Okay, put them away. Okay, wait. Let's go over here for a minute. Nothing over here. What come? What's, what's actually in here? A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Looks at the furnace. Smear your hands with coal. Looks at the furnace. It's <laughs> dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. I hear the murderer of the hangman talking. Maybe it's coming from somewhere upstairs. You should investigate. Or maybe you're just hung over again. Smear your hands with coal? A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking oh. into the wrinkles. Why did I do your this? Hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karazai ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Co uh, Hadra, Hadra Mat uh, Kazai. Smear your cheeks with black with color. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. Kick with your foot. A hollow ring echoes ah. through the furnace. Ah. Your toe hurts. A what? I'll leave. Wait, did it not work? Should I not have done it? While in the deck chat? No, oh, it's lame. Okay. Because I shut out the hidden doorway here. So two rust rifles are hard hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. With some busted guns behind, beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where am I? Inside, a secret room infested with rats, spiders, and wood lice. There's a hole in the wall. There is. Inside, it's nothing but gloomy blackness. Better not stick your hand inside. Stick your hand inside the hole. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs rummaging around. You find a number of rusty rifles hidden away. Most of them are ugly and inoperable, but a single rifle catches your eye. It's a bolt action with a fine wood stock. Take the rifle. A fit service weapon for a fit officer. Too bad it doesn't work. It looks like it's been out of order for years. 
What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around Martinez. This is an interesting coincidence. Could prove useful in some way. You don't know how, yet, but it might be useful down the road. This is a good find. Really justifies coming down here and looking around. Leave. If I was an ice cream maker, that's still running. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It Try to crack open the lid. Cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. No, this is going to need something else, some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. You're just wasting your time. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Equip the pry bar by going to the tools tab in your inventory. Why is this a tutorial? And equip it to a held slot. Okay. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Pry bar not strong enough. Let's try it. The ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. What is this? You see the pry bar's metal handle. <gasps> right before your very eyes did i break it that's a good pry bar but this ice cream maker is frozen shut it takes an advanced tool to get it open some kind of super pry bar you have no idea where to get one sooner or later you will stumble upon a tool mighty enough then we will know what's in this mysterious ice cream maker turn the ice cream crank turning the crank feels oddly satisfying like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. What's an entrepreneur? Intro not. Uh, okay. Apparently it's some sort of thing? What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? Okay. I still want to know what's an, what's an entrepreneur. Is that, is that a... Wait, let's translate. Never mind then. What's this? Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Unplug. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. 
This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. This orange machine is dead still. It has as the ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. You see the pry that's a tune on. Only the red cable is plugged in an electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Somewhere, a machine hums along with the... His eyes are dead and empty. Ice in a friendly cartoon. Hmm. Only the black cable is somewhere in the. Where's the lead to? Wait, so I could have gone this way the whole time? The tracks are as they have ever been. A bit more worn, perhaps. Fortunately, the street sweeper still hasn't noticed their presence. Maybe an ominous warning of bad things. Maybe an ominous warning. How do I get to the roof? The door is closed. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Knock again, much harder. Still nothing. You should punch a fucking hole in it. Fucking whore. Oh. <laughs> uh, punch it. You slam your fist into the vinyl. It does not produce a hole. The door sits sturdily in the frame, and your fist hurts. This was all a very good, normal thing to do.
mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror. Maybe I should get one more buck. What's up with this lady? What are you doing? Looking for something to read. Good, good. It is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Do you need help, policeman? What with? What with? A lot of things. For example, people tend to go missing. Maybe your husband is missing? My husband? No, he's not. So where can he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? So I'm hearing is, you really don't know where your husband is. Yes, but... I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. Would you like to? No. I can still help you find your missing husband. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. She has, though. The husband is totally lost. It's okay. You should tell her that it's okay. It's okay. What? It's alright to know where your husband is. It's nothing shameful in that. Who said anything about shame? Stop talking down to me. My husband is not missing. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. Maybe your children are missing? No, absolutely not. Okay, so where are they? Are you a policeman or a nanny? I please whatever I want. Where are they? They're not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home, smoking, giving the ladder of vices a chance. What if something horrible has happened? What if they're dead? That's the bad vibe you got before. What if something has awful happened? What if they're in the sewers? What? That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jambrock. There's nothing to worry about. She's getting upset. Her voice has risen. As she tries to convince herself that her daughters are safe. They're almost grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. I'm afraid the danger is now greater than ever. Tell me, how old are they? My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny, she is turning 18 next month. But we shouldn't even be talking about them. Can you describe their appearance? Any of the features that stand out? Something to make identifying a little bit easier? Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you that they're not missing? That they're in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party. Did someone say party? You could use a party. Hunt it down. It's for the investigation. I'm trying to be professional. There is no investigation here. I can tell you that. Watch her brass books. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. An array of neurons fire up with joy. Bum her a cigarette, lest it turn to pain. You smoke? No, I don't. I know for a fact that you smoke. Why do you think that I smoke? Your hands look like they belong to a heavy smoker. It's not like yours look much better. Take a look at your hands. She is right. Your hands look even worse than hers. With tiny cuts and gushes covering your skin like a spider web, your fingertips have become an ugly shade of brown. Just give me a cigarette, please. I already told you, I don't have any. Go bother someone else. She's lying. She's goddamn lying. She has smokes. Okay, thanks. Mm, no problem. She sighs. The woman before... I'm trying to break the vice anyways. Okay, okay, okay. Um... You broke down the back door, the wards, the door. It's all gone now. 
dark psychic energy leeching onto my shop. Sometimes it's not necessary to take resort to extreme measures. I suppose it's all over now. I guess there's no escape. What are you talking about? It's just a door. Just a door? This place is cursed, detective. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Just look at the sheer amount of companies that have failed in this house. I hope you're happy now. Happy that you've ruined everything. Now that you've broken the door, the curse is coming to get me as well. Uh, curse? I thought the uh, curse wasn't real. Of course you didn't. You're nothing but a policeman. All right. You know what? I'm willing to let you investigate the doomed commercial area. We are set on the path. There's little else to do. But before we go on, tell me, did you encounter the malignant entity? Of course, the entity. I didn't see her, but I sensed her presence. You did? Then it has to be true. I've suspected that this woman-shaped energy must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you see that she lives inside the chimney? You mean the chimney that's part of the central furnace? I heard voices coming from there. Yes, I've heard that. It's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains upstairs. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. And do return to me after you've talked to it. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. You should get back to the furnace. Make some noise. Your daughter's the one saying I said the bookshop, right? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. Ten. She's certainly polite and helpful. My precious... Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. I guess she's a tripper, right? But she can take it. But it's actually wearing her down. You know she's been biting her nails? God. Ugh. I told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. She'll get over it. Anxiety is a part of life. A part of hers, too. Clearly. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can, if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Actually, it's super alright for kids to show their hands off. Forget I said anything. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. Oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her the way she treats Annette. You're like Annette to your husband and your mother. Oh, well... My mother was horrible, of course. Absolutely perverse energies around that person. But my husband... Yeah? My husband is completely different. Of course. Is this husband Annette's father? Yes. My husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Caron. Grand Caron, and uh, what's that? It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you might call a silent partner. The woman looks aloof. Her features much softer. Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. That's all I can say for now, Bookbeller. Perle, 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 
This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance. Medical art. I'm gonna buy the medical purposes of the pale. Indeed, something about that book does seem to have spoken to you. Well, I hope it contains what you're looking for. Come, I can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no. Several maps have been. The maps look. Up. This large map, the Ozon. In the northeast, radiating outwards from you. The old connections you have lit, perhaps they are gods. Gods of shelves full of Anything about this bookshelf? I would say the greatest innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Great. I don't need to know anymore. Shelves full of biographies of famous people, whoever they are. I would say a very... The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-exam... Certainly. It you feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important. Browsing through suddenly. A high-speed love next to her. Uh, next to... I really must insist you... She understands she is here. I'm sorry. I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. I'm interested in the greatest innocent book. A true cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. What are you doing now? Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. It's better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. What is it? I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. Detective hat? Yes, just like the one Dick Mullen wears all the time. You'll look way more serious with that. Right, I have to get back to my homework now before Mum notices. Man, this is hard. Yep, it's your end on it. <laughs> Fucking love it. We'll keep up in our facing. <laughs> Fucking love the hat. I love it. Oh yeah, probably need a Jesus Christ. Eyes folded like a bell. Oh, thank you. Covers thank you for the bits. I appreciate the it, man. <laughs> Colossal industrial chimney. Uh, that scared the shit out of me. This must be where the entity lives. Ooh. This is directly above the central furnace in the cellar. The voices probably came from here. Leave. Let's walk around a little bit more first. As before, this is directly Lock on it. What an odd thing to do. 
Nothing happens. Look at harder. Still nothing. No one's home. I have no faith in you figuring this out, lol. Not even harder. Those curtains ah! have to be surprisingly sturdy. Ah! It hurts now. It's a consolation of it. There must be another way to wake up whoever is in there. Maybe you should try yelling into the furnace downstairs. Ah, oh, that fucking hurt like a bitch. Okay. It's okay. I don't need to figure everything out. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace. More pain in your Cover face. Kick the furnace. Yes. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait. Let's let's make this a hundred. Change the shirt. Roll the. Uh, roll the. Uh, you know, body around. Got the thick mullen hat. A thick layer of cold. Yeah, hello! Into the furnace. furnace. Coloring it, pitch something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then. Hello? You've awakened the entity. Uh, this is the police! Who's there? Hello? You hear a low rumble upstairs, the sound of a curtain being pulled aside. Cool. This is fucking exciting as hell. Oh god, I have to stop playing. I have to stop playing soon. Who the fuck are you? Poly, poly, colorful polyhedral dice, hundreds of them. Can you dispense them for purpose to contain thousands of dice? Hello, I'm Nia. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. Turn it up some headphones. So, what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. You must have confused me with somebody else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Uh, hold on, what do you mean by Milius? Yes, Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Uh, why are you asking me about this? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Yes. As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Um. Sure, I like role-playing games on any some days. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. This person means you, or no one else, absolutely no harm. She will answer freely and honestly. Uh, what do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. Seriously, you've got a great view of the courtyard and you hear anything, see or hear anything Sunday night? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. Um, do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. 
You never took your eyes off the work to look at the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean by daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's not sorry to disappoint you. Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Hey, wait, where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. I've heard this place is cursed. Do you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Wait, how do you explain what happened to all those companies then? It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Plaisance is, is the one, is that me? She's convinced that this place is swarming with malicious energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers who need to explore her own daughter to get the company going. Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers. She has to explore her own daughter to keep the company All going. Right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Wait, hold on. The whirling is part of the Doom commercial area? Well, no, the whirling isn't doing well either. It's pretty sure often comforts have trouble paying bills. And then there is me. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? It's because she's in cahoots with the demons. It's because you're competent and dedicated to your craft. The curse doesn't like affect people like you. <laughs> What, so the curse only affects people with poor work ethics? What you're describing isn't a curse, it's capitalism. The jig is up. The she-demon knows you've uncovered her true identity. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I think it still might be you that's causing this. <laughs> So I'm the Grand Dragon in the cave. Might I ask what supports this claim? I yelled to summon the ghost of the doomed commercial area and you were the one who answered. Oh my, I've revealed myself. You better call the exorcists. I don't have to call anyone. I'm a ghost whisperer myself. No, it is not my job to intervene in matters supernatural, supernatural, for I'm merely a police officer. Of course. How convenient. Well, if you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, then let me know. Plaisance needs to hear about this. Perhaps if you combine your psychic energies, you will make sense of the situation. Why hasn't her business failed? You feel nothing. If anything, it's uncomfortably warm in here. So taking off your clothes, you need to connect. Excuse me, what are you doing? Uh, is it me or is it hot in here? No, I don't feel hot. We're in a derelict smokestack. If anything, then it's cold here. Never mind, that was a terrible idea. Undressing in a stranger's place of business? Yes, it was. 
An unbelievably bad idea. Do you know what happened to the other tenants? Are you interested in anyone specific? Rats scuttle in the dark rooms under the abandoned blow dryers and dusty mannequins. Cobwebs cover rotors and radio computers alike. So much failure. Punch train machine. Fortress accident. The radio game studio. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. But are wrong. Well, I did hear them talking at times. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Really? That must have been some kind of, uh, it must have been on some kind of gigantic ego trip. That's what I thought. Because when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep up new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. And to show up to work on time. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult. Especially if you've been drinking. That's too bad. I would have supported them. The part of great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. The result is one on a 20 sided die. Nice. The dice is black. And filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? Actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Leave. Okay. Uh, that's where I'm going to save. Um, actually, we can keep going for a little longer. I'm going to just do this real quick. Okay. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for? I like to order die from you. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. Do you know the rural untethered setting? I would like to die for ah, that. yes. Fortress accident. It's too bad they never finished their game. The Wiro untethered die is a variation of a standard role-playing die. Only instead of plants, it uses motives of ice and death, and loss, of course. I'm thinking something made from alligator jawbone, cast in black resin. The reptile bone is as white as ice and dead as, well, death. For seven real, I could have it ready in eight hours. What do you need cast in resin? Untreated bone is porous and prone to chipping. Cast it in something hard like resin though, and voila, it's perfect. Voila. Maybe she a different one. Maybe you have some other ideas for dice? Just a normal die for me, please, for regular. A normal die? I'm a novelty dice maker. I don't make normal dice. What do you do then? Polyhedro dice. Dice that have more than four sides. Octahedrons, trapezohedrons, dodecahedrons. But also barrel dice and teeter them both. Come on now, be a little creative. Tell me about your most extraordinary die. A star that fell from the firmament? Those cost more than seven real. Are you sure? This I'm a star myself and a superstar and superstars don't care about money. Yes, you definitely have the proper attitude. How about a pair of 100 sided dice made of ivory and inlaid with lodestone, a naturally occurring magnet to complement your magnetic personality? 10 real, and I can get these ready in 8 hours. I need to think about it first. Maybe you have some other ideas for dice? I'm looking for something to help me with my work. I think I have just the right one for you. Police colors. Can I police officer? Not the most original, I know. But sometimes the obvious choice is obvious because it's best. 
Here, cat. They're a gift for me. Uh, catch the dice. Mr. Smooth Moves. You snatch the dice out of the air with one hand, just like you're in a movie. We get the weak dice maker. Oh, what are the odds? The red one is made of bloodstone with a lapis lazuli inlay, and the blue one is the inverse. I believe these dice are your lucky charm, officer. She winked back at you. Can you believe it? You truly are Mr. Smooth Moves. You definitely need luck in Martinez. Was there anything else? Uh, we'll leave. Let's check the new stuff we have. Optional. Wow, so someone's been a little boring. What? Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. Look, I'm trying to do my job. No need for extravagance. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My lord's copo type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out to Telefax. Why not? Send out to Telefax then. I'm not ashamed. Done and done. No actual communiques will be sent, of course. That would be too dramatic. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. The funniest part is I'm actually a part of the Inland Empire. But I've just not been listening to it. I, I do love the idea that uh, I um actually yeah we'll stop that I do love the idea that I actually have the Inland Empire like this strong kind of thing but I just don't listen to it like it, it kind of nags me but I just don't give a shit about it it's kind of fun What's that? This Emma's Atelier. Okay. The barbell waits patiently on the floor. Okay. Uh, done for the stream tonight. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it.